You pay him. Nice. <laughs> My best friend from primary school, Chris O'Connor, he went to America with his family and he came back and he had a Yamaha Pacifica and he had a skateboard and he was dressed completely differently. But he also had like a whole new skill set and I felt really inadequate and I was thinking, fuck, I need to, I need to step up my game. But I think that was like the defining moment where I was like, okay, I'm predominantly into rock music now because I want to be as cool as Chris was. That was probably the turning point where I decided I was a dirty, smelly, stinking grunger. In my head, a gig was like you'd see in a movie, you know, like a, a stadium or an arena with like explosions and people in like spandex. And uh, my mate, James Major, he was like, yeah, we're, we're all going to a gig, do you want to come? And I was thinking, oh, I can I afford it? Where is it? How would I get there? And he was like, yeah, it's in Watford, the rugby club. And I was thinking, fuck, really? And I, I was, was picturing it to be like that, like in a stadium, like fireworks going off, like a Van Halen music video. And then we got here and it was like, basically an old scout hut. It was sick and that gig, changed my life really. The people that were playing in the bands were from Watford for one and they were just walking around talking to everyone. There was like people singing along and stuff and I thought well maybe I could do it because before that anyone that was like famous or in a successful band was just untouchable. They were cut from a different cloth and none of us could ever have done anything like that. It just weren't meant to be. But that made me realise that sort of anyone could do anything. And then LTA's first ever gig was here at the rugby club. It must be hard when you want the best for your kid, and they're like, yeah, I'm gonna be a race car driver, or I'm gonna be an astronaut, or I'm gonna be in a rock band. It must be that whole fucking like, oh, please just get like a, a job so I don't have to worry about it, and know you can support yourself. I feel like things like that, not for everyone, but for some people, pay off in the long run. So it must have been scary for like, everyone's families and that, but and when things started going well, and we started getting like, you know, our first magazine features, and then we started, like the venues got a bit bigger, I think everyone was, was kind of like, oh, okay, maybe this could go somewhere. I didn't start off playing guitar, learning things like anyone else. I was just like a little weird child. So basically, I picked up a guitar, and uh, I made what looked like an interesting shape to me. It's like a descending little <laughs> was the riff. That was the best thing ever, right? I thought it was sick, I played it to everyone. If I ever went to a house party and there was an acoustic there, I'd be there like. Anyway, it's crap. We're not exactly Metallica, but we have, we have done a lot since our first gig here. I don't really feel much different. I feel a bit older and a bit wiser, but that's, that's the same with anyone really. We've traveled the world, we've done this, that and the other, and I feel like I've missed out on a lot of those things from like stressing or worrying, or I'd get so fucked as well just because I was like nervous or felt like I didn't belong there or shouldn't be there. And I, I wish that I could just go back to myself and say, don't worry about it mate, you're all right, you're a legend.